Welcome back, this is Yama Jack. Today we got Ashwood Asylum Suicidal Gunslinger. So the notification I got on my phone was at party, World 1 party, hosted by Cherry starting now, 2,000 cores. 2,000 cores! The close. Yo! The <laughs> I gotta go... I gotta go do that. What are we here, boys and girls? That is a, uh, a RuneScape divination training method thing. Some people save up some cores and then they go and use them and it gives you like a whole bunch of divination XP if you're just kind of there. So I gotta go and take advantage of that, because 2,000 cores, that's like... Seven or eight hours of... Extremely AFK. Divination XP, I mean that's like a couple million divination XP at least. I gotta go and take advantage of that. 2,000 cores? But it wasn't my knife, so... I'm mildly disappointed by that. It's okay. It's okay. The knife is coming today. It'll be here today. Just glad my knife isn't stolen. Because it's, uh, it's a pricey little thing. It's a pricey little thing. And so I'm so distracted thinking about the 2,000 cores that I can go and take advantage of that I can't even, I can't even think about things. All I can think about is how much divination XP I'm going to go get. We got double XP coming up tomorrow, actually. Holy cow. So if you, if you play RuneScape, right, if anybody out there plays RuneScape, tomorrow is double XP. Today. Tomorrow? I don't even know, dude, but uh, double XP is live in, like, a day or two. I don't, like, look, you got, I'm thinking about, like, time zones, and then, like, what time in that time zone does double XP even start, and then what time does this video go live at, and what time is that in that time zone relative to the time that the double XP goes live at in that time zone, which is what time for me. And I'm just, like, there's a lot of, a lot of times to think about, and I'm not very good at math. Not, not in camera, anyway. Uh, so, uh, double XP, like, you could just go check it. If you play RuneScape, you know, if you ever thought you played RuneScape, if you ever played RuneScape in the past, like, double XP is going, let's do it. I don't know, people get so stressed out about the double XP weekend stuff. It's not actually double XP weekend anymore. It's called double XP live because they can't think of a name to call something. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's just for marketing purposes because they want to get people into the game right now by saying it's double XP live, but it's not actually live. But people are like, oh my god, it's live right now, I have to go right now, get this right now. And then like they go in game and they buy their membership and they get it and then it's not live. And they're like, I've been fooled! And then by the time Double XP is actually live, they have to go and like rebuy membership. So they get double membership on it, you know? I'm pretty sure it's a marketing scheme. But uh, they call it Double XP Live now because it's, uh, it's 48 hours that you get to use up over the course of the week. It's actually a much better way of doing things, but their naming, like branding for it is kind of kind of a little bit frustrating. For a lot of people, not for me, because I, uh, I know it, so I'm not personally bothered by it. But uh, it's definitely something that uh, is just on the principle of the matter. You know, it's it's, it's the wrong way to do things. Uh, anyway, they call it double XP live now. It's just 48 hours that you get to use up over the two weeks, and you get to pause it whenever you want to. So if you're, if you're, you, you know, if you get to, uh, if you're doing some. Herb lore training, and then you're like, you know what? I kind of want to go and do some PVM. I want to go and uh, kill some Vindicta, but you don't want to waste your double XP on it. You can just pause your double XP, go do an hour in Vindicta, unpause your double XP, and come back. I think that you have to have an hour between pausing and unpausing, so you can't like pause it to bank and then unpause it when you uh, when you make the potions, and then like tick perfectly, make all of your potions. Like it doesn't work that way, but um. There is, uh, there's definitely a, a nice little thing uh, to do with pause. Because you have to go to the like Grand Exchange and buy new potions. You can just pause it and let it, uh, let it do its thing. <laughs> Got the hiccups. My hiccups are weird. Because uh, you know people, they hiccup and they're like, <laughs> you know. But me, I, uh, I get that because it's like kind of like a breathing in kind of thing, you know. I get that breathing in. Don't get me wrong, but uh, the thing is, is the kind of breathing in that I get is like uh, a weird like <gasps> instead of but but instead of like <gasps> it's like <gasps> my mouth is closed and it doesn't open for the hiccup, but then I still hiccup like through my nose, <gasps> you know? It's like weird like just pulling air into my body through whatever facet it can, and it's a uh, it's a horrible thing. But. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. 
So people will like uh, people will be like on the hiccups. People are like, are you okay? <laughs> like, do you need help? I'm like, no, I just got the hiccups. You're like, those aren't hiccups. Like, no, no, this this is what hiccups are to me. This is this is what a hiccup is. What I don't know how you do hiccups, but hiccups to me are deadly. They're fatal. They're not actually. They don't hurt. They're just uh, very unusual. I don't know. I think it's uh, it's the way I I, I handle myself and then I, the way I deal with hiccups. But it's not so much a uh, that that over exaggerated, you know. It's just the. Uh, I don't know. I guess uh, I guess maybe if you're a mouth breather, you go, and then if you're like a nose breather, you go. I don't know. I don't get the hiccups uh, all that often, anyway. But I do hiccup on occasion. You know, I don't I don't have like a hiccuping fit. Where I'm like, I just I can't stop hiccuping. You know, it did happen last night actually, funnily enough. But uh, it's not it's not too frequent that I'm like just hiccuping and I can't stop hiccuping. And I'm like, oh my god, let me stop hiccuping. I just want to breathe. You know, like that doesn't happen to me. Oh my god, two two videos in a row with deaths. Like, come on, me. What are you doing, me? But um. I do hiccup, like I'll just kind of be going about my life and it's like, oh, I gotta get a little, you know, like a little, <gasps> you know, whatever, whatever pass that you want to bring air into your mouth with, uh, you gotta, you gotta just do that. Wait a minute, we're on Ashwood Asylum, come on, boy. So it happens, it happens every now and then where I just, uh, I just pull air in. And people always react to it if they're, you know, my family doesn't so much, but, um, if I'm at like work or something like that, and I can't even like do the fake hiccup thing that I would do because I don't even know how the heck I do it. Um, but it's uh, it's it's a very strange sound, and it, it looks very strange. It's uh, it's all around just kind of like a, a bad thing. You know what I think it is? Why I'm dying so much? I think it's because I'm tired. Because like I'll, I'll be honest with you, normally my eyes move around the screen as I'm kind of doing things. And I kind of like look at things. I'm not really right now. My eyes are kind of remaining static. And then I'm kind of just... Uh, I'm very tunnel visioned right now is what I'll say. So I don't really have peripheral vision. Like I can't see this dude over here so well. I can't really move my eyes. They're kind of like glued to the front. Like normally I can like check out my ammunition or whatever. Normally it's not that I can, but that I do. Um, whereas right now I'm definitely not. I'm not doing these things that I'm normally in the habit of doing, which may or may not be a good thing. All of the things that I do anyway, which may or may not be good things as well, I'll say. Um, whereas right now I'm kind of just letting it take me where it wants to take me and doing its thing and it's all good, whatever, whatever happens, happens and it's all fine. You know, it's getting really hot now actually. When I started recording, I don't know, an hour ago, so I recorded the Yamajack tries, and then I recorded the uh, two KF2 episodes today. So it's been about an hour of recording. And you know, yeah, I have no ventilation in this room. None. My window's closed. My door is closed. I don't have a fan on. I've got, you know, basically a space heater on in the form of my computer with uh, pretty decently powerful hardware that kind of consumes a lot of energy and kind of produces a lot of heat because that's what computers do. Um... But, uh, it's, uh, it's hot. It gets hot. So, uh, I was thinking I might, like, just record as many videos as I can today while I can because it wasn't that hot when I started recording. Like, when I recorded the Yamajack tries, I was actually comfy. Like, I didn't have any complaints about the temperature at that point, but, um, at this point, I definitely, I definitely do. So, leaving the window closed not viable for long-term recording in the uh, in the summer in the winter it definitely worked but we've, we've got a, a few more a few more weeks to say the least before uh, before we're at that point again unfortunately i mean it would be great if uh, if we had winter right now because winter's great except for the snow but i'm probably not going to be driving much so Still thinking about getting that motorcycle. Really, really, it really boils down to whether or not I, uh, the YouTube takes off. So, you know, you can say that I want the YouTube to take off because it'll be a fun job. 
You're kind of wrong. I want the YouTube to take off because I want to get a motorcycle. And there's no way a motorcycle is a, is a good decision if I have to still drive to work in the snow. No way. No way in heck. It's not, it's not a good decision. Uh, anyway. Where are we going? Get to the indicated pod for resupply. I want a motorcycle. That's the that's the moral of the story. How much fun would it be to drive around on a motorcycle? We saw this girl on the motorcycle the other day. My sister and I were driving to visit her grandparents. Well, my sister was driving. I wasn't. Was I driving? I can't remember who was driving. I don't think it's a really important part of the story, though. Anyway, somebody was driving. No, it was my sister, because I was taking pictures, and I definitely wouldn't be using my phone while I'm driving. I'd say that I am at least... A responsible driver. I will not use my phone while I drive. Um, I have this hair in my face. Oh my god. Like gets into your nose. Oh, it's so bad. Um, we were driving. We saw this uh, this girl on a motorcycle. And uh, my sister and I are just kind of like looking at her like. Yeah, this girl, she's she looks cool. You know, like the way she would like stop at the, at the lights. And like the one leg would come down to like balance it off. I'm like, yeah, she's she's just a cool girl. I'm into I'm into this. <laughs> like this, I want I want I want this uh, this this aesthetic for for myself. Cause it's just uh, you know it's a very it's a power move you know to be sitting at the intersection and just your leg comes down, holds up the motorcycle, and then off you go when the light turns green. And off. It's uh, to me it's just it's like. Uh, just that's a, so much so much cooler than pulling up to a light in your car and being like ooh man it's all of a sudden it's gone a lot hotter now that I don't have a breeze guess I'll turn on the AC you know it's just it's cooler that's why I want that's why I want a motorcycle is that a good reason to want a motorcycle yes is it a good reason to buy a motorcycle no no that's why I haven't I could afford one Right? Like, I could afford to go out and buy a motorcycle. And that, not right now, because I've actually made quite a lot of purchases this month. But, like, next month, I could afford to go out and get, like, a motorcycle. Get it insured. But, is, is, is just wanting to look cool a good reason to go and do that? No, it's a poor financial decision. That would be a, uh, that would be a mistake to do. But, uh, I could do it. You be dead. It's just I gotta, I gotta worry about also driving. I don't have the money really to afford both a car and a motorcycle. Even though the motorcycle is, I believe, much, much cheaper to maintain. Like, um, I believe you get better gas mileage on a motorcycle. I would be shocked if you don't. Um, I believe that insurance is generally lower on a motorcycle just because it's cheaper. Like, you wreck a motorcycle, you wreck, you know... Three thousand, four thousand dollars. You don't wreck like twenty thousand dollars. You know, kind of, uh, kind of easier on the insurance. Um, although maybe you're more likely to crash, so maybe the insurance still goes up. I don't know, man. I'm not an insurance agent. We've also just had like insurance change. I'm pretty sure insurance is cheaper on motorcycles, though. Uh, but. Um, you can't use it really in the winter if you live in an area that gets snow. Uh, even if you're a good driver in the winter, right? Like, even if you're, as a motorcycler, you know, you're like, yeah, I can handle some snow, right? Like, even if you personally can handle, and it's the same for cars, really. Even if you personally are a good driver and you're able to handle, you know, piloting your, your vehicle in the, in the snow, even if you personally can do that, the other people on the road can't. People suck. They're dumb. They don't know how to drive. Every other person on the road is dumb. Okay, every you, when, you're, when you're driving, you just you assume every other person on the road is a four-year-old that stole their mother's car. And you'll probably be right, because that's how they behave. But, <laughs> like genuinely though, you do. You, you, you do genuinely want to assume that every person on the road is, is an idiot, because uh, you, you know, it's, it's all about that defensive driving. You want to preemptively 
protect yourself from the uh, from accidents and being on a motorcycle kind of you know excludes you from being able to do that so especially in the winter time when people are particularly bad um, when there are when there's snow anyway it's, uh, it's very important to, to not be on a motorcycle around other vehicles because all it takes is one person sliding into you and like that's that's a huge accident you know if you get like a car sliding into another car on the road like you're gonna have some car damage right and it's gonna be kind of like a big deal in your life because you're gonna have to deal with all the insurance and then there's gonna be all this kind of stuff happening but like what's gonna happen is you're both gonna get out of your cars you're gonna go and be like hey yo you just hit my car yo and he's gonna be like yeah I'm sorry about that man like wasn't expecting it to be that icy, you know, like, here's here's my number, you know, blah, 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 let's work this out, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, all right, bro, yeah, it's cool, I gotta get to work, though. And then you hop back in your car and you drive off to work, and you've got, like, a, a bit of a chip on the back of your car, right? And uh, ultimately, you're fine, and then their insurance pays for, like, a paint job, basically. And uh, you're, you're fine. Like, people aren't driving, generally speaking, like, fast enough to wreck your car if they drive into you. Um, so like you get you get a chip, a dent, whatever. You take it to the the shop. Their insurance pays for it. You're good to go, right? In a motorcycle, same thing happens. Somebody just slides into you. You're done. Not dead, but like there's a, a good chance that you're not driving your. Uh, there's a, a very good chance that you're not driving that side of that motorcycle to work after the accident, like. It's uh, it's it's some some heavy damages there. Okay, we can we can make this happen, I believe. I thought we could, but I was uh, evidently wrong. I just I hate when she's on the other side of me, you know. I hate when she gets the advantage there like that, you know? Because it really makes a big difference. Here, use your, use your, use your melee attacks and stuff, okay? I'm gloating. So, uh, yeah, if you're on a motorcycle, like, there, there's a good chance that you're not just driving to work after it because your motorcycle is probably totaled from being impacted by this two-ton death machine. And, uh... You gotta, you gotta worry about that, and then you know your insurance will still take care of it. But like, you might have some personal injuries from it because there just isn't that much mass in it. Like, it's just, it's so much worse on a motorcycle, mind you. You're able to avoid it better if you're paying attention because you can kind of like weave into some traffic. And assuming you're at a light, there's like stopped traffic. You're not gonna be at like the front. You can like weave in between the car and then have like some car mass between you, and hopefully the car doesn't get bumped forward enough to like hit you. But like, it's at least dampened. So you're able to avoid it better, but like it takes one lapse of judgment and like it's a big deal, especially in the winter. So if you're going to be having a motorcycle, you got to have a got to have a car for the, the, the winter time is the is the moral of the story. And uh, I can't afford both. So I have to not be able I have to be able to not drive in the winter to get a motorcycle. That's the moral of the story. That's, that's really where we're going with all this. I'm going to go use some divination cores. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if anything to say and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Off to RuneScape.